my name is Amanda and I'm the manager of public programs at the Schuylkill Center for Environmental Education. I'm here for our first ever virtual Schuylkill Saturday. I'm just going to take a few minutes to wait for everyone to join us. Um, but if you can hear me, if you can just give me a thumbs up or just a comment in the comment section below, just want to make sure that we're good to go. Um, but again, just going to wait a few minutes until everyone, until people join us. So again, we're going to be going virtual for our Schuylkill Saturday programs from here on out. Um, so you can tune in every Saturday at 1030. And this is just our first one of many. Hey, again, if, you're, if you can hear me at all, just give me a thumbs up um, or shoot me a comment below just so I know that we're good and everything is working. Oh, awesome. I see a thumbs up. Thank you. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes, um, give other people the opportunity to join in as well. But just to kind of give you a sneak preview, we're going to be learning all about insects today. So I have some insects here that we'll be meeting. Um, we'll also learn about why they're important, what makes an insect an insect. We'll give it a few more minutes. So normally we'd be outside for this, but unfortunately we were having not too great of weather this morning, so I kind of brought everything in. Um, so we'll be inside today, but in the future we'll be outside for these programs. All right, I'll give it another few seconds. All right, so I'm gonna get started. So again, for those of you that jumped in a little later, my name's Amanda. I'm the manager of public programs at the Schuylkill Center for Environmental Education. So thank you for joining me for our first ever virtual Schuylkill Saturday. We're gonna be doing these every Saturday from here on out until we can meet again in person. So make sure to tune in in the future, Saturdays at 10.30. Each week we'll dive into a different topic. So this week is a little abnormal um, in that I'm coming to you from my living room. Normally we would be outside for these virtual Schuylkill Saturdays, um, but since it was thundering this morning and there was some heavy rain, it just wasn't safe to be outside, but now it actually looks like it's clearing up um, so hopefully at the end of the video, when I give you some nature exploration to do on your own, you can head outside and do that now that it is clearing up. All right, so for those that didn't hear today, we're going to be learning all about insects. So I just want to start out by talking about why are insects important? Because they're super tiny creatures, but they're really, really important for our ecosystem. And the first reason that insects are important is they're really great pollinators. So what they'll do is they'll go from flower to flower, picking up pollen at one flower, dropping it off at another, and that's how we get more flowers. But in addition to pollinating flowers, they're also really good at pollinating crops or foods that we eat. So I don't know, do any of you like avocados? I know I love avocados. This is a crop that's pollinated by insects. We have insects to thank for that. They also pollinate apples and even tiny little things that you wouldn't even think are pollinated by insects like almonds. So these are just three examples of different types of foods that they pollinate, but there's hundreds of others. And that's the first reason why insects are super important. They pollinate a lot of flowers, plants, and even the foods that we eat. They're also really important because they're really great decomposers. So a decomposer, that's a big long word, but what decomposers do is they break down things that are dead or dying in the forest. So insects, in addition to fungus like mushrooms and bacteria, what they'll do when something is dead or dying in the forest, a plant or an animal, is they'll come around and they'll break it up and return it as nutrients or vitamins into the soil, which is really, really great for the health of that forest. And if we didn't have decomposers doing that, like our fungus, our bacteria, our insects, when something died in the forest, it would just kind of sit there. And that would be a really sad forest after a while. It's just a bunch of dead things that just stay there without being returned to the soil. So we know that they're important because they're great pollinators, they're great decomposers, 
Another reason why they're really important is they're a vital part of our food web. So if you know an animal that eats insects, can you just type it into the comments below? I want to see what types of animals we can come up with. So I'll give you a few seconds. Because I know I have some on my mind, but I'm sure you can come up with some as well. All right, so some examples of animals that will eat insects are frogs, um, bats will eat insects, even larger animals like possums and even fox will eat insects. And then other animals will eat those larger animals. Cool, Eduardo said bees. Yeah, so even some smaller animals, spiders. Yeah, so smaller animals will rely on those insects too. So they're a really critical part of that food web and if we didn't have them, we wouldn't have a lot of those smaller and then those bigger animals that eat them. So now that we know why insects are so important, let's talk about what makes an insect an insect. So a lot of people think that any little creature that they see is an insect, but there's a few key things that make an insect an insect. And the first is that they have three distinct body parts. So I have a little plastic insect here that you can see those body parts really well on. So the first one is the head right up here. Oh, someone just said apes will eat insects. That's a great one. Definitely, they eat them a lot. So we have the head is the first body part. The thorax is the middle body part. The thorax is where the legs end. If they have them, the wings will come out of. And then the last body part is the abdomen. And that's kind of like the belly of the insect. So that's one thing that makes an insect an insect is that they have these three distinct body parts. Animal or bugs like spiders, they only have two. So they're not actually insects. But when I show you some critters later on, you'll see that these three body parts can be really hard to see sometimes. So that's actually not my favorite way to tell if an insect is an insect. My favorite way to tell is to look at the legs. So insects have six legs or three pairs, whatever is easier for you to think about. So let's just count the legs on my little critter here to see if it's an insect. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I do have an insect here. Again, you can also think about it as pairs of legs. So we'd have one, two, three. So in addition to using their legs to move around, whether that be crawling or hopping or even swimming, they'll also use their legs sometimes for silly things. So the cricket actually has its ears on its legs. So in addition to using its legs to hop around, it will also use them to hear. Now my favorite is the butterfly. The butterfly actually uses its feet to taste. It has little taste receptors on the ends of its feet. So what it will do is it will stick its feet on a flower and it can figure out what it tastes like. And then it will take its proboscis, which is a long tongue, unfurl it and suck up that nectar. Now I want you to think about how crazy this is. Can you imagine if we did that? Can you imagine if when we went to eat our dinner at night, we first took our feet and put it on our dinner plate and we kind of felt around and figured out, hmm, do I like this? Do I not like this? What do I want to eat? And then we put it into our mouth. That's crazy, but that's exactly what insects do. First, they'll put their feet on their food and kind of feel around and taste it. And then they'll use that proboscis again to suck it up, that nectar. But that would be kind of crazy to think about if we did that. All right, so, so far we know that they have those three distinct body parts. We know that they have six legs or three pairs, whatever is easier for you to think about. <laughs> um, the next thing that makes an insect an insect is they have two antenna on the front. So you might have thought that these were legs, but these are actually antenna. They're coming off the head of the insect. I'll give you a few seconds. What do you think they use that, those antenna for? Just comment below what you think. And you can't be wrong because again, we're still learning. 
it's a little delayed on my end, so I'm just gonna wait a little bit to see if we have any answers about what we think they use those antenna for. So they use those antenna for a number of things. So the first one that always comes to mind for people is that they use them to feel. But in addition to that, some insects might use their, yeah, Eduardo said some insects use their antenna to listen, which they do. Others might use their antenna even to smell. So my favorite, yeah, and Emily just said to smell. So they'll use them to feel, to listen, to smell. My favorite insect is actually an ant because they use their antenna in so many different ways. So ants, what they do is they actually emit what's called pheromones, which are, is like a chemical that has a distinct smell to other ants. So when you see ants and they meet each other, you'll notice what they do is they touch antenna. So not only is that their way, that for, that their way to feel that another ant is there, it's also their way to figure out hey, do you belong to my group or colony? So different groups or colonies of ants actually have different smells. So isn't that crazy? They can touch their antenna and figure out, do you belong to my colony? Because they're picking up on those pheromone smells that the other ants are letting out. They'll also use these pheromones to find food. And sometimes they'll even emit pheromones to let other ants know that there's danger around. So those antenna are crucial for ants. Not only do they use them to kind of meet other ants, decide if they're part of their colony or not, but they also use them to guide them to their food and even to retreat if another ant is sending out pheromones that say, hey, there's danger, get away. So again, ants are really cool in how they use their antennas, but um, different types of insects use their antenna in different ways. Okay, so let's just recap again so we know what makes an insect an insect so far is that they have those three distinct body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. They have those six legs or three pairs, however you want to think about it. They have two antenna right at the top. The last thing that I'm going to talk about that makes an insect an insect before we see some critters is that they have compound eyes. Now that's a big word, but all that that means is that they have a bunch of little eyes that make up one big eye. So I just kind of drew here kind of what a compound eye would look like underneath a microscope. So you'd see kind of all these little eyes inside of one big eye. And if I were an insect, my compound eyes would look something like this. And those compound eyes are super important for insects, but they're not like our eyes. They can't see a lot of details. So if I were an insect with my compound eyes, I wouldn't be able to tell what color shirt you're wearing. I probably wouldn't even be able to make out the details on your face. But what I would be really good at seeing is movement and light. That's why if you've ever seen someone try to fly at a fly, chances, or sorry, swat at a fly, chances are that they flew away before they could get to them because their compound eyes, together with their really quick reaction time, tells them that, hey, there's movement, fly away. All right, let's just recap one last time before we bring out some critters. All right, so again, they have three distinct body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. They have six legs or three pairs whatever is easiest. They have two antenna right at the top, and then they have those cool compound eyes. Okay, so I have some critters for you to see today. The first one that I'm gonna bring out actually is one that you wouldn't be able to find around here, but I wanted to show it to you for one reason. It's really large, and for that reason, I think it will be easy for us to tell if it's an insect or not an insect. And I'm gonna need your help to figure out if it is an insect or not an insect. At the bottom of your screen, you'll notice there's some little emojis. If you think it is an insect, I want you to hold up the thumbs up emoji, which looks like this. All right, if you think it's not an insect, though, I want you to put the frowny face emoji, which looks like this. All right, let's bring out our first critter. 
Again, this guy is not from around here, but this is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. And in just a little bit, I'll flip that camera around so you can see it a little closer, but I just want to tell you about it first. <laughs> so like its name implies, it's from Madagascar, so off the coast of Africa. And it's called a hissing cockroach because it actually lets out a hissing sound when you touch it sometimes. So I'll try. This guy's pretty used to being handled, so I don't know if he's going to hiss, but let's just try. I don't think he's hissing. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's pretty used to this. But if he was hissing, what he would be doing, it's not actually hissing how we would hiss coming from our mouth. It actually is air that's coming from their abdomen. There's tiny little holes. They'll kind of press down and they'll push out air through their abdomens or bellies. And that's how they'll hiss. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see it closer. I see a lot of thumbs up coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I'm going to turn around so you can see it closer so you can try to decide for yourself if it's an insect or not. Okay, let's see here. All right, so you can kind of see the one side. So however many legs you count on that one side, chances are there's that same number on the other side. Try to show you the top of it so you can see if there's antenna or not. We'll go back to the legs one more time. Cool thing about this guy's legs is you can kind of see those little um, points coming off. That allows him to grip onto things, so they're actually really good climbers because of that. And I'm going to give you a hint for this one. It does have three body parts, although I know it's hard to tell. Um, like I said, that can be difficult to tell on some critters. Okay, we'll give it one last look. I see lots of thumbs up coming in. Oh, I'm just going to turn my camera back around. Kind of hard with the critter in my hand. <laughs> okay, give it a few more seconds. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. If you said you thought it was an insect, you are right. It is definitely an insect. It has those six legs, three on each side. We definitely saw the antenna. They're really nice and long. And like I said, it does have those three distinct body parts, even though it is kind of tricky to tell. Okay, let's say goodbye to the cockroach. I'm going to put it back. Again, this is one you would not find around here. But next, I'm going to bring out some critters that you will find around here. Okay, so next we're going to move on to another one that's a little simpler, but again, we want to start with these ones, and then we'll move into some that are trickier. So the next critter that I have is called a red wiggler. Well, it's a type of earthworm. I actually took it out of my compost bin. So let me, t again, turn the camera around here so you can see it. So you can see there, so again, it's a red wiggler. They're really great in compost bins because what they'll do is they'll break down all of that dead or dying plant matter and kind of um, turn it into soil that has a lot of nutrients or vitamins in it that are really good for plants. So, and these guys actually aren't native to here, so that means they're not from around here, um, just like all earthworms. See a lot of sad faces coming through. It's kind of cool to see him move and use that belly to inch along. So we'll take a few more seconds. I'm going to switch the camera back over to me. So I saw a lot of sad faces coming through. Okay, so we'll get the answer in five, four, three, two, one. Nice, if you said it's not an insect, you were right. It's definitely not an insect. No legs, pretty simple. Okay, so those are the easy ones to start. I have two others that I'm gonna show you. The next one is a favorite of mine. This is, I'm gonna talk about it a little first and then I'll switch the camera and show you. Um, but this is a type of critter that you can find in ponds. Just making sure I still have it. <laughs> so it's actually a damselfly nymph. So a lot of you have probably heard of dragonflies. So damselflies are just the female or girl versions of dragonflies. But all dragon and damselflies start out as nymphs in the water. 
And then similar to frogs, they undergo metamorphosis or big changes to become the adult version that we know. Now you might be wondering how you can tell the difference between damsel and dragonflies. So as adults, dragonflies are, and even as nymphs, dragonflies are a lot larger than damselflies. They also tend to spread out their wings like this. Whereas damselflies are a lot skinnier and tinier and they tend to keep their wings together as adults. But as nymphs, you can kind of see those wings starting, but you can't quite see them yet. Okay, so I'm gonna flip my camera around so you can see the damselfly that I have here. Okay, so this is her right here. Oh, let me get her to move around some. I know she's hard to see, but I'll show you on um, the picture actually that we can use to help us decipher if it's an insect or not. But I want you to notice at the tail end there, there's back here, there's kind of these little things that look like feathers. So those are actually gills that she can use to take in oxygen from the water. And there's three of them there. Hi, Elizabeth. Oh, thanks for your comment. Yeah, we're right around the corner in Rock Sparrow. So I hope you come visit us soon. Okay, so I'll spend a little more time looking at the nymph here. Let me see if I can get her to move again. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can see her? I know I can see her, but I know it's probably a little harder for all of you. So she's right up there. There she is, you can kind of see her wiggling around. Oh yes, we're in Philadelphia, but um, kind of the tail end of Philadelphia. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a picture now because I know that it's kind of hard to see that little tiny critter and figure out um, what its legs are looking like. So I'm going to bring over a picture next to my little bucket here. And this might help you a little more. So what do you think? Insect, thumbs up, not insect, frown face. Oh, sorry. So, okay, so we'll spend a few more seconds trying to figure out insect or not. Okay, and in five, four, three, two, one, it is an insect. Yep, so I know it was hard to tell when we were looking at the nymph, but it did have six legs. Um, and then again, in the adult form, still an insect. Cool. Okay, I just have one last bug to show you and I wanted to bring this one out just because this is one of the most common ones that you're gonna find if you go on a little bug search. Um, so just wanted to make sure to showcase this one too. It's called a pill bug. Another name for it is roly poly. So they roll into balls to kind of protect themselves. So I'll flip my camera over in just a bit. And again, just like the dragonfly or the damselfly for this one, I also have a picture to show you as well. So if you can't see it as good um, at first, I'll show that picture too. Okay, I'm gonna flip my camera over. Okay, so you can see we have our little pill bug right here. So pill bugs are actually really great decomposers. Again, another name for it is a roly-poly. I'll see if I can flip it over in a second so you can see the legs. Oh, oh we have a little ant there. Didn't even see. <laughs> um, but again, they're really great decomposers. In addition to breaking things down, they're actually really good at taking heavy metals out of the soil. So metals like zinc or lead, um, they'll actually take that out of the soil, which is really helpful. Okay, so I'm kind of seeing mixed signals on this one. I saw a, um, oh no, where'd our pill bug go? I saw a thumbs up and then I saw a frown face. I think I might have lost our pill bug in the container. Oh, there it is. <laughs> gonna see if I could turn it over for y'all, but I don't think he's gonna want me to. So I think we'll go up to our picture to look at the legs. 
Just zooming in a little more since it's crawling around now. Okay, let's move over to that picture so we can see it a little better. All right, so there's the picture there of the pill bug or the roly poly. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone, I hear you, Elizabeth, these are um, roly polies make me think of childhood, definitely. Finding them when I was a kid. Okay, so I'll take about five more seconds. I'm going to flip the camera here. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Lots of sad faces coming in. You're right, it is not an insect. It was hard to tell at first when we were just looking at the critter that was in my um, jar here. But once I showed you the picture, I think I saw a lot more sad faces coming in. Um, so really, police are actually cool. They're um, what's called terrestrial crustaceans. So that first word, terrestrial, just means that they live um, on land, and then crustacean means that a, a crustacean is an animal like a um, crabs are crustaceans, shrimps, lobster. So crustaceans, just like insects, are a type of arthropod. That's kind of the bigger umbrella. But then they're different than insects in that they only have two body parts, unlike insects that have those three body parts. So roly plays again are really cool because they're one of the only terrestrial crustaceans. All right, so that's all the insects or, and non-insects that I have to show you today, but I wanted to leave you with a little activity that you could do at home to continue your nature exploration. Um, so first, I'd encourage you to go on a bug search, try to see what insects and non-insects you can find. Some really great places to look are under rocks and logs. Um, you can also look under leaves, but if you look under a leaf, they camouflage really well. So just be careful to look really closely before turning that leaf back over because there might be something there that you're just not seeing. I do want to remind you though, if you do go on a bug search and overturn some rocks and logs or even leaves, just make sure to turn them back when you're all finished because this is their home. And just like we wouldn't want someone coming into our home and messing it up, we don't want to go into their home and mess it up either. So you can search under rocks and logs, just make sure to turn them over when you're all done. So once this video's over, I'm gonna put a little bug bingo hunt that you can use with your family in the backyard or a nearby park to find some critters, search under those rocks and logs. But say you don't have a backyard that has a lot of rocks and logs or even um, a lot of trees, another really cool option that you can do is to make a bug board. I'm gonna flip my camera again for this. But I made a bug board the other day. It's just a piece of plywood, so something really simple that probably a lot of us have lying around. And you can color it using acrylic paint and then just set it out in a, um, either in a grassy or an area with a lot of soil and keep it out for a few days and then turn it over and see what um, you can find underneath. And then another really great option if you do make a bug board is you can make a little notebook to go along with it. You can put the date, what you found under your bug board that day, and then just keep going day by day. So thank you again for joining us. Again, I'm going to put in the comments below once the video is all over on the PDF so you can play bug bingo outside with your family. I'll also put some instructions on how to make your own bug board and um, identification notebook. So I'll stick around for a little bit to um, answer all these comments that are coming in. But again, really want to thank you all for joining us. We're going to be doing this every week. So I hope to see you again next week at 1030. Bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right, Elizabeth. The roly polies definitely look really prehistoric for sure. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Eduardo. Thanks for tuning in. Yep, thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so I'm going to sign off. But again, thank you for joining me and hope to see you next week. Bye, Meredith.